Now for the moment that we've all been waiting for, objectively debatable, potential proof of alien life among the stars, almost. Israeli astronomy professor Avi Loeb now launching the Galileo Project at Harvard University, which with nearly $2 million in private funding, hopes to systematically search for and study UAPs, or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, aka they're looking for possible evidence of extraterrestrial technology. But here to tell us all about it is astrophysicist, chair of the Harvard Astronomy Department, and co-founder and director of the Galileo Project, Professor Avi Loeb. Professor, it is so great to have you back with us. We talked a, a couple months ago when you first spoke about Oumuamua, which uh, was discovered in 2017, a UAP, uh, which you've studied and, and asserted could be alien space junk. Now, how have your studies actually evolved in the past four years? Right. Um, in 2017, we discovered the first object from outside the solar system near Earth, and uh, it looked weird. It didn't look like a comet or an asteroid. And since then, the U.S. government uh, uh, had a task force and uh, delivered a, con uh, a report to Congress identifying objects that whose nature is not known in the sky above the U.S. And after that report came out, um, I said that it's about time for the scientific community to get engaged and uh, identify the nature of these unusual objects near Earth. And that's what the Galileo project aims to do. And it's called the Galileo project because, as you may remember, uh, Galileo Galilei uh, changed our worldview by looking through his telescope. And uh, the philosophers at the time refused to look through his uh, telescope. So we shouldn't uh, make the same mistake again. We should examine the sky and figure out what's out there. Well, so are, are there other objects that maybe have crossed your path and, and piqued your interest recently? Uh, well, the, there are a, a large number of objects that uh, were mentioned in uh, of other 140 mentioned in the uh, Pentagon report to wow. Congress. And uh, that's an admission of the US government that its intelligence agencies are not doing their job in a way because they're supposed to know what flies above their sky. And uh, I think the subject should move away from the talking points of politicians, uh, military personnel to the realm of science where uh, we will basically use telescopes that collect open data and we will analyze it in a transparent uh, way. And gladly, over the past couple of weeks, I received private donations that make it possible. And I assembled a team of uh, exceptional astronomers and scientists, and uh, we plan to purchase these uh, telescopes, equip them, analyze the data and release it to the public and see what we find. It's a fishing expedition. We don't know what we will find, but we are open-minded. We shouldn't make any assumptions. All right, so, so let, let's talk a little bit more about the Galileo project itself. You know, how, how exactly did it come to be? You know, who, uh, who, who helped you put it together? What will you be looking at first? Right, well, um, uh, the administrator of uh, uh, the astronomy department at Harvard sent me an email one day saying you have a new research fund and that never happens in academia. I asked who, who is the person that gave me the money? Could you please uh, l let me know the details so that I can thank that person? And then another uh, multi-billionaire uh, sat with me on the porch of my house uh, with questions about my book, uh, uh, Extraterrestrial, which was translated to Hebrew uh, a couple of months ago, Chotzan. Uh, and uh, asked me questions about the book and then decided that he wants to donate funds. And altogether, within two weeks, I got $2 million. And there are many more people interested in both funding and participating in this project after the public announcement. And what I did was assemble a team of exceptional and dedicated and passionate uh, scientists that uh, would like to collect more data and address this question scientifically. You know, science is about the reproducibility of results. And um, I was born on a farm in Israel, and I pretty much maintained my childhood curiosity. When you tell a child what the truth is, the child refuses to believe you. The child goes out and collects, assembles data himself or herself, gets bruised very often. But in that process, you learn new things. And we pretty much want to do the same. We don't want to look at classified data because it was uh, not using not the very best instruments that we can imagine. We want to assemble our own data, make it open to the public, and analyze it in a transparent way. 
And that's the way science is done. And this subject, you know, should be part of astronomy, the mainstream, because we are using telescopes. Uh, just to give you an example, um, a, a one meter sized telescope can resolve the head of a pin, a millimeter scale on a human size object at a distance of a kilometer. So we can read off the label made in country X versus made on exoplanet Y. And we will figure out what, what these objects are. Maybe they are natural, but uh, so be it. Uh, whatever we do, we will find something new. Uh, we'll, we will understand something that is currently not fully understood. And, and uh, therefore, it's a win-win proposition. All right, so my final question, you know, I, I've looked at I've looked at some of uh, the information on the Galileo project, and I understand that it's going to be very systematic. If you, as you've said, transparent. What What are the chances that alien life, extraterrestrial life, intelligent life has already visited Earth? In your opinion? Oh, in my opinion, it, it's quite significant because most stars form billions of years before the Sun. And just imagine a technological civilization like ours or a little more advanced, we already have artificial intelligence systems that drive our cars and in the future may make uh, medical decisions about, about us. And uh, if you send such a system into space, it's just like educating your kids early on about the principles that would guide them through life and then sending them to the world. And you send uh, an artificial intelligence system to another planet equipped with a 3D printer, it could replicate itself. And in a billion years, such systems can populate all habitable planets within the Milky Way galaxy. Wow. So if such a civilization, only one, existed in our past, it could have already sent these probes to Earth. And it's possible that they are here. <laughs> and that would be the answer to Fermi's paradox. Where is everybody? It's not creatures. It's not biological right. uh, entities that we will meet. It's AI systems or uh, that, that could outsmart us. And we will need to use our own AI systems to understand them, just like relying on our kids to figure out content in the internet simply because they're more computer savvy. All right, well, you've given, a, you've given us some very exciting things to think about. Professor Loeb, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me.